Hi guys, this is Mike with Century Security Systems Incorporated, and today I'd like to show you the CMS client. The CMS client is used in conjunction with our Axia series of products. It is used to connect remotely via a PC to an Axia NVR, DVR, or our RPIP guard. What I'd like to do next is show you the CMS client, what the interface looks like, and how to configure it. I already have it installed on this computer, so I'm simply going to double click on the desktop to open the CMS client. Once the software opens, we're we are greeted with the default interface. First step is to click on settings, and we need to add a device or two. Okay, to do that, in the lower right hand corner, we're going to click on add. We're going to name the server, so this one will be the Sentry Demo. We need to enter our IP address. The next step is the connection port. By default, it's 5100. We're going to leave that on the default settings because that matches what the Sentry Demo is set to. If somebody had configured the DVR differently at Sentry, then we may need to change that connection port to be something else. Okay, the next step is to enter our username and password. Now, you don't need to change any other settings. It does give you options. For example, you can play a WAV file if there's motion uh, to, to prompt you to look at the screen so you can see what's going on. You can specify which cameras you'd like to view. The other key one here is device type. Okay, for PC-based devices, which all of the Sentry NVRs and DVRs are, you'll leave it on the default. We do offer a product called the RPIP Guard, and for that you do need to change it to the DH series. The next option down below that one is the stream type. So you have substream and mainstream. If you're connecting to a device on your local area network, we recommend mainstream. If you're connecting over the internet, we would recommend substream. Okay, I'm going to use Substream because I'm connecting over the internet back to the office. Once I've done that, I'm going to go down here and click on OK. Now we can see in the list the Sentry demo. We see the IP address, display port, and the number of cameras on the system. If you see zero in the number of cameras, then that typically means that you've entered something incorrectly. So you'd click on the device, go to modify, double check your uh, usernames, passwords, IP addresses, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to enter my IP address again. It does reset it each time you go in. So I'm going to press OK. Next I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on Add. And uh, for this one I'm going to add my home connection. So I've got the office connection. Also I want to see what's going on at home in my garage. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my local IP address for that one. And on this one, I don't have a password, so all I need to do is enter the username. Because this is a local connection, I could go ahead and change it from substream to mainstream. Mainstream does use up a lot more CPU resources, but it looks a lot better. Okay, I'm going to leave this one on substream because I like to leave this running all the time, and I don't want it to use up all of my CPU power just for this program. So I'm going to go down here next and click OK. Next option I'm going to change is under the system set. In here I can specify a connection group to open as soon as the application runs. So rather than opening the application and being greeted with 25 black squares in the background, I can specify which one I want to see. So I can say I want to see my garage camera from home as well as a couple of the cameras from the office. I can mix and match those options. I'm going to select group 1. You can create several different groups as you can see here, up to 32 different groups of connections. Group 1 will be my startup connection. So next I'll go to group set. Now for connection group 1, I only want to see four cameras at a time, so I'm going to change the partition mode to four view. For window 1, which will be the upper left hand corner, I'm going to select the Sentry Demo and I would like to see 
camera two. For window two, which is the upper right hand corner, I'd like to see camera one. And then window three, sentry demo, I would like to see the Wi Fi dome camera. Window four will be my home connection. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit save and exit. Now, if I close the software and open it again, we should be greeted with all of our cameras. Okay, now one thing to look at here when I did mention the CPU usage, my home computer is not all that powerful. I am at 100% CPU usage with just these four cameras connected. So if you plan on doing a lot of cameras at the same time, you're going to want to keep an eye on that and make sure you have a system that's fast enough to, to handle that. There are ways around it. You could do something like lowering the resolution to help with that. Now, if I click on menu, I have the option to back up my system parameters. This will allow me to back up the settings on the DVR at the office remotely. Okay, this can be handy if I wanna make changes to a system or I wanna duplicate that system. I have, have something at one, you know, say I have a bunch of schools, I've got it set up perfectly at one school, I can copy those settings and then import it into the same setup at another school. Next thing I'd like to look at is the playback. Down in the lower left hand corner, I'm going to select playback and it's going to ask me which server I would like to view. I'm going to select Sentry Demo and press OK. Next, I'll be greeted with the playback screen. In the upper right hand corner, I've got my calendar with dates and times. Okay, so let's say I'd like to look at today's date. And it's going to allow me to specify a time. This is important. I'm looking at the office and VR and I'm at home. So I'm going over an internet connection, which is not the fastest. So I can specify a certain time period. So I can only look at stuff, you know, between eight and nine o'clock so that I'm not loading the entire database for the whole day when I'm only really worried about a certain time period. Once I've selected my time period, I can say OK. And I'm going to be given uh, all of the motion events at that time period. I can double click on any one of the cameras at a specific time and see what was going on at that time on that camera and view it in the playback window. The next option that I have in here that I would like to show you um, is over on the right hand corner is capture image. I can, I can click on that and get an image of what I'm seeing currently on the screen. Right to the right of that is the backup option. If I click on backup and backup by time, this is the exact same window that I get on the DVR if I'd like to back up something. So I'm going to specify the path, pick the beginning, time, and date. Now you'll notice how it's grayed out. Um, I can only pick from within the time period that I specified um, when I was choosing to load the database. So there's nothing outside of that time frame that I can back up. So I could say, for example, you know, I want to back up between 944 and 948. Once I've done that, I just select the camera that I would like to back up and click back up. Once I'm back on the main screen in the lower right hand corner, I can click to exit and that'll bring me back to the CMS client page. Once I'm done with the software, I can again exit out in the bottom right hand corner. Thank you for watching the how-to video on the Axia CMS client. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you.